Gold spot price to $7,700. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Ainsley Insights, brought to you by Ainsley Bullion, Ainsley Crypto, and the Gold and Silver Standard, as the Ainsley Group celebrates 50 years. Today, we welcome back Sam, who's been looking further into the recent exciting moves we've seen in gold with some more details on what has been driving it and where the potential outcomes are from here. How are you going today, Sam? Good, Chris. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Fantastic, um, exciting number you've put up there in the news today, $7,700. US dollars. That's a that's a very big number, big jump from here. Mm. You've talked about the gold's price potentially being much higher. What what are you where are you coming from there? What's going on? Well, all you have to do is look at the 10-year bull run from roughly 2001 until 2011, which was the high point, and you can see a 600% increase in gold. And you know, despite looking high in recent weeks, gold's actually just up over 100% from from you know our recent bull run of a, a similar time period. So, if you compare that 600% to only roughly 100%, mm. We're we're not even close to the last bull run in gold, so it might look like it's you know high now. Okay, it's high compared to a few weeks ago, but in the scheme of things, gold actually potentially looks quite low. So, if we copied the gold bull run last time and we went off ten years from low point to high point, we would be seeing gold at seven thousand seven hundred USD per ounce in the next two years. So that's all I'm looking at is last bull run compared to this one now. Does um, you know money printing increase over time or decrease over time? Well, a lot of times it increases, so we we could even see a bigger number than that. That's just being conservative. And of course, we don't have a crystal ball. We don't know how gold's going to perform if it's going to go down over the next two years. But that's purely just looking at the last run up in gold over a ten year period. And while you were saying that, that was what was popping through my mind when you talked about the the money printing potentially being even higher. When we look at the the debt situation in particular um, over that period of time, we are in a much worse situation than we were back during that last bull run. So your argument about that being a lower target could actually end up being the conservative um, way to look at it, really, when you think about just how much worse the situation is now than it was back then. Well, that's a term hockey stick inflation or hockey stick debt. That's, you know, the further it goes, the more sharp the the incline gets. So, yeah, it, it could potentially get a lot worse. But um, I mean, we're we're coming we're coming in close to that two years being over and it being a 10 year period. And mm -hmm. we haven't seen gold rise uh, anywhere near as much as as expected. So if we look at it from the other angle um, and, and sort of like you said, we don't have a crystal ball. We don't know. What yeah. about a potential dip? Because you keep hearing people um, saying, well, it's too high now. Like even though you've just given a much higher target, it's too high now. I'm just going to wait for it to pull back. Does that happen? Is there a risk that you miss out? How do you look at that side of things? Well, when I used to um, you know, advise traders, one of the biggest, uh, one of the biggest issues traders would have is they would short gold during a bull run. And um, swing traders always expect the price of gold to go up and down and up and down, and they trade these daily movements. And then suddenly it just goes up and it keeps going up for about 10 years and they just get wiped out. And it doesn't take 10 years to get wiped out. It's, it's yeah. pretty quick. But that's what happens. There's a window that things bounce between and then that window changes. That's just how it works. You know, the US dollar was in a in a window before and it's gone lower and lower and lower. That's why it's lost about 99% of its value. Um, if you look at gold at the beginning of the last bull run, it was a couple hundred dollars. After 10 years, it went to a couple thousand. Hmm. So imagine people um, at that time looking at gold and saying, well, it was 200, now it's 400. That's ridiculous. It's doubled in price. It has to come down. There's no way I'm going to buy over 200. And um, now you can see the parallels. There are people saying, I'll never buy over 3,000. It's got to come back down. I mean, if they could predict back then, gold would go from two or 300 all the way up to 2,000. They would, uh, you know, they'd be absolutely shocked. So people looking at a number now like 7,000, I mean, that's barely an increase from, from two or 3,000. So very, very small increase. So um, it, it's just people not being aware uh, of gold's history. And you can see it very easily on any chart. 
And that it reminds me of a really important point that keeps being made about it's all relative. So, and sort of what we said before about the debt situation, but when you look at the denominator being US dollars, it might not even be that gold's moving at all. It's really that the US dollar is debasing or current fiat currencies generally are debasing against gold. So gold can stay absolutely flat as it has, you know, existed for 5,000 years. It can be that exact same price and still get these very large um, movements up over time that catch people out. It, it, it is very difficult if you're trying to trade around a um, long-term secular trend like that. Yes, that's that's the dirty secret. Gold doesn't really go up much at all. It's the currency we're measuring and going down, and they purposely switch that around to compare gold to a currency instead of currency to gold. So, um, but it's it does its job. So similar to a lifeboat, you don't have a lifeboat because a lifeboat keeps going up. You have a lifeboat just because the lifeboat doesn't go down. That's yeah. <laughs> pretty much the only reason. Um, so, looking, you you put a whole lot of charts in the um, article today looking at other things as well when we talk about stocks and metals how how are other things going in this current environment uh well if you look at stocks and other metals firstly i want to talk about copper and i put a chart of copper on there and copper is very interesting because it's so industrial it can't lie to you dr copper tells you what the economy is going to do about eight months from now almost every time and um, then I also put up the Russell. So instead of the S and P, which is these, you know, you have the magnific magnificent, magnificent seven, and you have these other um, companies which don't really represent the rest of the the country. And then you have the Russell two thousand, which is all the small caps. Now the small caps react stronger from. Uh, the, they react from government policy stronger. They react from inflation stronger. They react from everything a lot stronger. And the companies at the top of the S&P also get some very, very juicy, uh, dubious deals with, with the government as well. Some of them pay, um, you know, very little tax, if, if any. And um, it it's makes a lot more sense to look at the, the Russell in this situation. And if you look at copper and compare it to the Russell, they look the same. The charts look exactly the same. They're following each other, except copper last week had a big breakout upward. So what this could be meaning is that producers are anticipating in the next eight months, there's going to be an increase in consumer uh, you know, consumption. Mm -hmm. So they need more products. And why is that? Well, it could be they know something we don't. They could know it's an election year so. You know, at, towards the end of this year, they need to pump the economy and make everyone happy. Um, they could know that, you know, interest rate cuts will happen. They're just pulling our leg a little bit and, and there's going to be plenty of liquidity towards the end of the year. And if so, that's something gold really, really likes. Yeah. Okay. Well, all of that together, I think, really paints this picture that even though we're at all time highs, this could be, if you, take your time horizon out to looking over possibly the next two years, this could just be the start of something much bigger. So it's not necessarily, um, or it's it's not necessarily wise move to be bailing out of gold here and and waiting, because as you said, you might not get that buyback in opportunity and everything's looking pretty good over that longer time horizon. That'd be a good summary? Yeah, I think so. All right. Well, thanks for your work on that today, Sam. Really appreciate that. Lots of um, good information there. And I think everyone really needs to look at those charts as well. So thank you for that. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, everyone, for watching. We'll chat again soon.